as hell. We had a partial ice storm here. Uh, a city about 100 and something miles away from us, Oklahoma City, apparently got hit hard. We escaped it because it melted off. Melted off. Anyway, this is the first video um, since the last video where I got robbed in the shop. Okay, I'll be really honest with you. I can't tell you how much I appreciate everybody's feedback and sending me messages on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, the guy's been a godsend. I'm okay. The tools are starting to be replenished. Actually, uh, I found some of the tools cheaper than I originally bought them on sale now because of these early Christmas, Black Friday things and stuff. So that's benefiting me. So I'll be up and running at full capacity probably by, actually by Christmas. I'll have probably every tool that I had lost replaced. And I'm replacing it out of my own money you know, instead of insurance, you know, it's just stuff like I say. I'm still hunting here and there, pawn shops, looking for stuff and searching around, putting words out. I got close on Saturday of maybe having the same suspect at another place, but um, they didn't catch him. So anyway, I'll keep you tuned to the hunt, okay? And it's just a hunt to make sure this person doesn't do it to anyone anymore and make sure he's incarcerated the proper way, okay? Anyway, make sure you hit that like button because today's video is about something else. Okay, winter time's coming, and a lot of you guys in the north will be putting up your machines for the whole winter. But that's all right. It's time for you to start gearing up, either doing maintenance, fixing things that needed to be welded up. And the guys that have been in this business for a while understand what I'm talking about. Something that may have had a crack on it, but you pushed it and pushed it and pushed it. This would be a great, t great time. Your machine's down, take it apart, you re-weld it, you paint it. You know, that kind of stuff. But also... This is where you start thinking about how, for the new guy and for the uh, older guy that's been here, how do you make your business grow to the next level, okay? Like, you know, I do a lot of subcontracting that, you know, honestly, it's more now, things have changed, 90% subbing, and then the rest of it is, is you know, home-based, and I, my brother takes care of a lot of the home base for me, or the fireman that is transitioning into my business. Uh, I've been sending him out to those people. Because contractors, you have to slowly introduce people to, and you know, they might like, think they get a better deal with me than my brother or the other guy, or they just like dealing with me more because I've been dealing with them for over 20 years. Anyway, how do I increase my business? Now, I'm getting out of the business in a year from now, basically. So for you, how do you increase your business, right? Well, I want you to now become the I know a guy. In New York, we call it, from the Bronx where I'm from, Italians call it, I'm not Italian, but they grew up in an Italian neighborhood. The Italians have an expression called, I got a guy. Not, oh, I got a guy. And what that means in, in, in the rest of the United States would be I know a guy, is, okay, you're a stump grinder, right? Or say you're a lawn guy, or you're a tree guy. But I'm gonna base it off of stump grinders first, and then I'll expand it. I'm a stump grinder. I'm the last person on a person's property, right? I'm the one grinding out and all, and I don't pick up trip, chips. So they may ask me, he says, hey, do you know anybody to pick up the, the chips? I got a guy. I keep a number on my phone for a couple of guys that like to make a little side money and they got a trailer and they'll go by on Saturday or something and pick up the chips. Or they say, you know, I need this whole thing graded. And, and I, you know, I need a landscaper or a dirt guy. I got a guy, right? Or I'm at the person's house and we're talking and they say, you know, I just bought this house or the contractor says, I just got this house, it's a mess. I need somebody to clean a fence line off. I had the tree guy clean up stuff, but he really doesn't want to do the fence line stuff. I got a guy. I got a guy that likes doing just the, the, the nasty stuff. He has a dump trailer, he has a skid steer, and he likes doing that stuff, right? So also, if you're at a homeowner or whatever, I got people that text me all the time that say, hey, you know, I, haven't, uh, I, have, I don't have a stump to do, but I figure since you're out there working with other blue collar people, do you know a good carpenter? I got a guy, you, or a tree guy calls me. to say hey, we're taking down the big tree. A log came down the wrong way and we broke a sidewalk. Do you know a concrete guy? I got a guy. See, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna build up a list of all these subcontractors. Now, the only ones you're gonna keep on the list 
or guys that you know, you know do quality work. Do not refer somebody as a fly-by-night guy or a piece of you-know-what, okay? Don't do it, because that comes back to you in a bad way, because they'll just call you back. Hey, you know that guy you recommended? He ripped me off. He did this. He did that or whatever. So, you know, you self-screen these people. If you're in this business, you know who's honest and who is really like a used car salesman. You know, okay? You know in your heart this guy's a rip-off artist if he's a good person, okay? Or you may know a guy that just works Saturdays, a guy that paints. I knew a guy that was a school teacher, a school teacher all year, but summertime, he was a house painter. That's how he fed his family. He was a coach and teacher all year long. In the summertime, he was a painter, right? So you're gonna compile yourself a list, keep yourself a list of the I got a guy, or I know a guy, okay? And how that comes back to you, because you're thinking to yourself, well, it's just like one side. No, how it comes back to you is that same guy, some of them are tree guys. I got guys that call me tree guys coming and say, hey, someone just called me about a stump. You know, we don't even bother. We don't do stumps at him. You're the stump guy. Here's his number. Or I gave him your number. He'll be calling you, right? Or the carpenter guy, the concrete guy. Concrete guy calls me back and says, hey, I got these roots in the, in the steel. Can you grind them? I grind them, right? Or he says, hey, I went by this house. Customer asked me, how do I get rid of that? And the dirt guy calls me and dirt guy goes, I ain't backhoeing that out or whatever. Call out him. I got a guy. So it goes back and forth. Now in New York, it's done differently. In other places in the United States, it's done differently. Let me tell you how it's different, okay? How I do it differently is I don't charge any money for the referral, okay? Or I don't hold it as a favor, hold somebody by his cojones and say, hey, you owe me because I sent you that job. I don't operate that way. It comes back to me tenfolds over being the way I do it. I just refer people, right? Now, and all the people, how they do it around the United States, even in New York, where I'm from, what's in it for me, right? So like if I'm referring a guy to say, you know, I, I got a concrete guy, and the customer goes, hey, can I have his number? So no, no, I'll call him for you. And that guy owes me 10%. That's how it goes, the 10% rule. Around the United States, it's, it's, it's like a subculture. You can email me back or send me something back on YouTube if you think I'm wrong. Been in this game a long time. Could be less, could be more. Where I'm from in New York, it was the minimum of 10%. $1,000 job, $100 goes to the referral guy. It's kind of no different. This is the old way before Angie's List, oh my God, Home Advisor, all those things. Before the Angie's List and uh, Home Advisor, there was, I got a guy, trust me, or I know a guy, right? It was the first thing there ever was, okay? I mean, even back in medieval times, someone needed a sword. I know the best sword maker. I got a guy. He's over there, right? So it's, you know, it's, it's the white collar world uses it a different way. Oh, we're having a networking party. Oh, a networking event. In the blue collar world, it's, I got a guy, okay? Anyway, hang around because you know at the very end of this, and uh, I always give you a movie question. But right before I do this, I'm going to show you, hang for a second, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and for the movie question, you know, first two people to answer the question correct, I don't care where you live, Timbuktu to Kalamazoo, you get a sticker, right? But I need you, and I'll show you, I'm going to show you the two stickers side by side, so give me a second, all right? All right, remember, if you win the sticker, first two people to answer the question correctly, win the sticker in the comments. You gotta be a subscriber, you gotta hit the like button, right? But also, you gotta tell me which one you want. This is the old sticker, remember? It's a saying I came up with, if you're not learning something new every day, you must be dead. There used to be another part to it, but I don't put it on there because YouTube kind of don't like it. And then the other one my son drew up, right? It's the character you see in the opening video. Okay, so you let me know if you want the new one or the old one. Either way. And when you get the sticker, please, don't be shy. Take a picture. You take a picture where you put it, on your equipment, your toolbox, wherever you put it, on your laptop, on a wall, I don't care, wherever. Or take a picture of just you and the sticker. And I'll put you on the next video that you, you know, I always list who the winners are. Okay? So don't forget. Anyway, now for the question, all right? 
There was a movie that came out, and I'm not sure what year it came out, you know, I'm sorry. But uh, it's actually a very funny movie, and it takes place in our late 20s, early 30s. And for you young guys, I know you're already going to say, I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Anyway, this movie starred Eddie Murphy, and a bunch of famous, famous black comedians were all in this movie, okay? It's called Harlem Nights, all right? I suggest you watch it, or I'll, I'll put a link to it. I'll put a link to where the question's coming from, okay? But the question is, and if a woman or a kid's watching this, I'm just going to put you to you this way. The question is, in that movie, there was an Italian mobster that was a pickup guy. A pickup guy is the guy that picked up the money or the numbers uh, from when he used to gamble back in the day in the cities. That's how he used to do that, okay? People used to gamble, and then there was a guy that picked up the money from different locations and transported it. Anyway, the mob pickup guy. They were going to try to do this deal where they were going to rob the mob pickup guy. So they needed a woman. They go to another person and ask about the woman. So they ask this madam, hey, we need a beautiful gal. She says, well, I got a prostitute, right? I want to know what the name of the prostitute was. Beautiful gal, she's the one that pretends that she's in love with the pickup guy, all right? She had two names. The first part is what her name goes as a prostitute. And then near the end of the movie, they had another name they called her, okay? So I want to know, let me make this tough on you. So you kind of got to watch stuff. I'll put a clip to the first part and you'll find out what her name was. But her first name was as a prostitute. The second fake name they gave her during the heist to kind of smooth things over. So she had two names, all right? And the second name, I'll just start off, give you a little hint. It was Lady Blankety Blank. Okay? So, the name of the movie is Harlem Nights. The name of the prostitute, what she was called, her name as a prostitute. In the beginning, at the very end, she had another name on the street. I gotta make it work for her. I'm gonna make it stuff so freaking easy on you. Anyway, appreciate it, guys. And you know, I gotta be honest with you. You know, I got robbed on Friday. Uh, it took me three to four days before I would even come back in my shop. Alarm systems coming in, it's already being installed and all big, more security and stuff's my fault, okay? Uh, I tend to trust people too much, you know, but there's a lot of, you know what, in the world. Anyway, so, I just refused to come back in my shop because I felt violated, okay? Now I'm back in, cleaning up and stuff, moving stuff around and all sorts of doing the tools and hunting them up and stuff like that. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys. God bless you. And we'll see you on the next one, okay? Remember, I got a guy. And you got a guy. You got me. If you got a question, ask me. See you.